Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Mandy Parsons, and you are listening to The PM Show on Freedomizer Radio. So glad to be back with you this week. I was under the weather last week between weather changes down here in the great state of Georgia and between working my tail end off at school. It is a never-ending cycle of last-minute requirements placed on us teachers But I am back this week, and things are winding down, and Thanksgiving break is next week, and then Christmas break is not long after, so we cannot be disappointed. So welcome to another episode. We hope you enjoy what you hear tonight. I do have one of my dynamic co-hosts with me here right now. I'm hoping that our other one will make an appearance, but I do have Danica the Great on the air with me, and like you guys, I'm sure we missed being with you she missed you guys as much as i'm sure as you missed her so hey what's up miss danica hey very very good to be back on it it was really kind it was really kind of sad that we weren't able to do last week i mean i know there was just so many different things going on so and you know we radio hosts especially you know you know always enjoy a break every now and then but you know if it can you know if it can be helped we try not to do it obviously but um, it just it does feel like it's been a while since we've hung out, and you know what, Mandy is a good friend of mine, and I always really enjoy hanging out with her. So not being able to do the show is just not like hanging out with one of your besties. So um, it was you know it was kind of sad at first, but I think I'm going to be okay now. <laughs> well, I was so not feeling it last week. Sure. Um, you know, Monday I didn't do the podcast last Monday um, that we do. Oh, that Monday bad, night. huh? Yeah, I didn't. I said, do you think you can live without me? And they said, yeah, we think we'll make it work. We'll just tell everybody you have Ebola. (laughs) Ebola Chan. So I'm really sure that they probably did tell everybody that I had Ebola. I never go back and listen to the episodes. It's just, it's one of those things, you know, you listen to your voice and people, people say, oh man, Mandy, you have a great voice. It's so pleasant to listen to. And God, you've got a nice voice. And I will even brag a little bit and say I have turned men on by the sheer sound of my voice. Yes. Yeah. How, however, I listen to it and I'm like, Ugh, no. I'm yeah. Okay. When have we not heard some sort of men folk say something about our voices? Like, I, I swear, if a guy really wants to, like, just, I don't know, something about the female voice, I suppose, just really makes them happy. And I don't know how to subscribe because I've been told the same thing. And I'm like, Eh, stop. <laughs> right? It's no, it's it's absolutely true. You're absolutely right because I listen to my voice I'm like, "Eh, it's me." I listen to you I'm like, "Yeah, she's so pleasant. She's got a nice voice to listen to and and to hear." And then guys are like, "Oh, what's up?" You so, said <laughs> your voice your voice is sexy. I'm like, "Uh, okay. Thanks." Uh, yeah, that that sounds all right. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I'm just like, "Okay." So, but uh, yeah, I never go back and listen. I was told I should because they did mention I had Ebola. But then Wednesday, I was just like, you know what? F it. I'm not. I'm not doing this. And uh, I, I messaged Dave. Uh, proof negative. Whoops. Sorry. Proof. Um, message <laughs> proof and uh, told him that I wasn't able to do my show because I didn't feel well. But he never responded. And I don't even know if you read the message to be honest. So. At that point, I was just like, whatever. I tried to offer the show to someone else, and he messaged me back too late because he doesn't have Facebook Messenger. He only has Facebook. So I was just like, nah, not doing it. But the only bad thing about not doing a show on Freedomizer is that Mm -hmm. it doesn't give me any material to upload to Voluntary Virtues. Yeah. And so I totally ditched on that one, too. And I, I did feel very bad about it. Um, but I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. And I mean, just if you're, if if you're sick, you're sick. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, there's, you know, what are they going to do? Yell at you, get mad at you for being sick. Oh, curse you for being sick. You, you shouldn't be sick. And it's like, okay, you know, kind of out of my control here, guys. Sorry, but you know. Oh, how dare you get sick when you do this on a voluntary basis? I know. Right. So it's just like. Yeah, whatever. Well, yesterday I didn't get into work until noon, and oh wow, I was driving to work and I had a problem with my cooling system and it started overheating my engine. So I was just like, great, great. I have enough money saved aside for the trip that I'm taking next week, and 
I, you know, now I have to spend money to get my car fixed and I'm freaking out and I'm wondering what in the world. It turns out I had an air bubble. It was just an air bubble. So they had to get the air bubble out of my coolant system. And I was like, cool. So I owe you for a diagnostic. He's like, nah, you can pay me for just a, a gallon of antifreeze. But then he's looking in my engine and he's like, oh, you need a tensioner and the belt on your tensioner. It looks rough. You're going to need one of those too. And I'm still like, oh, geez. And these are honest, honest people. So he's not taking mm-hmm. me for a ride. I know this. And still, I only paid, this time I paid a less than $200. And they, because it was a little over 200 but they let me post date a check till I get paid next week. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah if, if it's only $200 for car repair, I say you're having a pretty good day. <laughs> oh, it's having a great day because I know that they can get pricey. But, you know, the only thing I could think of was this time last year I was a substitute teacher. And that $200 honestly would have been one-fourth of one month of a paycheck. Oh, wow. Okay. This year I can say, wow, heck, gosh, it's a car repair. Darn. But I have the piece of, in mind that, uh, it's taken care of because I'm making the money to take care of it. Yeah. And that's good that, you know, now that you've gotten this position that you're able to do that because I, you know, I know that when, you know, I first moved, when I first moved to um, the freedom, you know, the semi freedom state, because it's not completely free, but it's, you know, more free than a lot of places. Um, when I moved to the semi free state, um, I, you know, I didn't have a job right away. So sometimes things would come up and it's like, uh, I really, I I have to pay for it because I it is something that I need, but I hate doing it because I don't have any income coming in. I'm really using my savings. Thankfully, you know I you know I I have since have gotten a job, and so now I'm not so worried about it anymore. But I definitely understand that need to, you know, really try and justify the um, the purchases. Absolutely, I still have enough money left over to make my trip and. And a little bit of better news is that instead of getting paid the day after Thanksgiving, which um, is when we were slated because we always get paid on the last day of the month, um, they're giving us our paycheck two days early. So I'll get it next Wednesday. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's a little better. I'll get it in midweek while I'm up visiting. I'm actually going to visit Liberty Phoenix. So I'm excited about that. And I hope he gets, I hope he's excited too. I think he's more excited than he's letting on, but I'm going to tell a secret. Um, he doesn't, he says he doesn't get excited. He won't let himself get excited, but I, I Oh, we got some dirt spilling here. Yeah. But I think, I think he is. So I, I really hope he is. Um, and if he's listening, whoops, but I don't think that was a secret. He would tell mm. that himself. Um, well, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, he likes Barbies or something really weird like that. You weren't supposed to say anything. Oh, sorry. Shoot. Oh, um, now he's going to be mad. Um, um, he, he likes ponies. Yes, yes. He, he, he loves ponies. That's your secret. Oh, right. That's not a secret. I'm <laughs> proud to talk about that. <laughs> What are you smoking? Um, nothing that I'd like to be. <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, so you know, I'm getting ready for this trip and got the money to drive for gas. And I wish they were paying us on Friday. The school district where I used to work, they would pay us the day, the Friday before the holiday. Oh, that's nice. So the county where I used to work is probably distributing paychecks for their employees on Friday, like day after tomorrow and I'll have to wait till next Wednesday but it's still next Wednesday instead of next Friday yeah well my job we are paid weekly which is kind of it's kind of nice looking forward to a paycheck every week and it's every Wednesday so it's every middle of the week which is very weird because I worked in retail a lot in my um, late teen years um, and pretty much you were always paid weekly like every retail job that I had that you know I worked at the mall it would require we would be paid um uh, every week and that you know they were starting to do direct deposit so I would have it directly deposited um, at times I would get a paper check but for the most part that's my first start getting into mobile deposit and it was nice because I mean on the one hand it's nice that you're getting money every week but at the same time it's smaller obviously because you don't get those twice monthly checks so sometimes it's a little bit harder uh, managing your cash flow because it seems like your entire paycheck is going to rent or some other bill when really it wouldn't be that much because typically you would have two or two and a half weeks worth of pay on one paycheck. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to. And it's nice that it's on a Wednesday because, you know, in case of 
a holiday, a holiday like you know, Good Friday, for example, or whatever. We don't have to worry about delays. Um, the only delay that I recently experienced was with this uh, recent Veterans Day. Because it was on a Tuesday, um, a lot of us that had direct deposit, um, it was delayed by a day because they normally they would get a, all the processing in Tuesday for our uh, payment on Wednesday. And in this case, it could oh you know they couldn't do it until Wednesday so I had a day late on my paycheck but other than that like it's every Wednesday and it's kind of weird but kind of cool at the same time yeah unfortunately teachers don't get paid but once a month and it's at the end of the month but we make it work somehow man yeah I think I I remember talking to someone that also got paid once a month and it just uh you know it's kind of nice that you get all this money at once but you really have to make it last for that entire month you do but, you know, we do what we have to. So it's not a big deal. That's because you're teachers. Yeah, pretty much. Do We don't have a choice. You want a job? Here. You're going to get paid once a month and you're going to Oh, it. It, took, it took you forever to get a position where you're at. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure really, it would not come that easily to me. <laughs> no, I'm really grateful. And I'll tell you, I'm looking through the prep that we use for the podcast on Monday night. And I, I got to mention it. I mean, the subject they said has been driven into the ground, but Ebola is to me is still a huge subject. People are still talking about Ebola. Therefore it's still news. So does everyone, or, you know, you probably remember um, uh, it made the news and it's that, you know, it's going, it's going to be discussed at some point um, on the news again, I'm sure because of the superior court, but um, you know, Keene, New Hampshire, near where I live, um, took you know sued the so-called Robin Hooders because they were quote unquote causing loss of revenue to the city, and we all know that paying the parking meters is essentially just paying the parking enforcers. It doesn't go anywhere else into the city, but to just parking enforcement. So essentially, it is a useless job. Um, so that you know, so they so they're you know being sued for this loss of you know loss of income, but really it's just kind of a useless job. Um, I did hear all about that, and the first thing I thought of was, how many of these people do Danica and the rest of our friends know? Um, all of them. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first thing I thought about. I I just am so tired of walking around in a world where people are so selfish, where people are telling me what I need to do with my paycheck, how I need to spend my money, that money is being taken out, and I don't even know where it's going, you know? That is what disgusts me. The whole thing was this was supposed to go towards Social Security. Sometime when I am old and ancient, I'm supposed to be able to cash in on all this money that's being taken out of my paycheck because the government says you don't know how to manage your money and you don't know how to put aside for retirement, so we are going to put it aside for you. When Yeah, I, I heard about something like that. Oh, the fact of the matter is they're taking the money. The, we'll never see it. And it used to be like two people, two people to, for one person in Social Security, and now it's like ten or more to pay for one person on Social Security. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Just give us our money back and let us do what we need to with it. And if we fall flat on our faces and end up homeless because we didn't manage our money correctly, for God's sake, that's our own fault, and you're not there to protect us. Yeah, I'm not, you know, again, it's just this, you know, government hand-holding all of us so that we're cr absolutely crippled. You know, where in the world do they think that we just couldn't get it on our own? I'm not sure, but, you know, people tell me all the time, you're a voluntarist, you are an anarchist, but you work for the government in a public school. How does that work? And, you know, I've shared in the past certain things that I have done in the classroom that probably would be frowned on, but I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I had, I have a group of students in my class. They're higher level readers. And in order to fill them in on current events, when we have small group reading instruction, I pull up this site. It's called Newzella. And you have to be a teacher, I think, to access it because I can only get it through my school email address. Um, and I'm pulling it up right now so I can pull up this article. And it is it is something else. You, I think your jaw will drop when I was t tell you what I've been talking to my students about. 
Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Oh, and you know, I I apologize. The point that I was trying to drive with the whole Robin Hood fiasco, um, you know, was mostly to touch on what you were saying that you know people are tired of hearing about Ebola, but you believe Ebola is still a thing. You still want to talk about it. I mean, I tell you, people were so tired of hearing about you know, oh, the parking enforcement and stealing revenue, no one gives a crap, move on to something else that matters. It's like, okay, number one, it does matter because it matters where your money is going. Secondly, as long as it's going and people are talking about it, it will be discussed. People are still talking about it. It's still news. So as long as Ebola is still around and people are talking about it, Sorry, you're gonna have to hear a bullet. You don't people you don't see people stop talking about, you know, the war in Iraq or ISIS because people are tired of hearing about it. No. Well, I think the thing that and before before I get into the article that um I was talking about with my kids, I think the thing about this most recent Ebola uh article that I read is the fact that there was a doctor in Sierra Leone and he is excuse me, was married to a woman who is a U.S. citizen. And she's mm-hmm. like, my husband is deathly ill. United States, please bring him home for treatment. If you bring him home, I will incur all the costs. So the government, of course, the government's going to say, yeah, of course, we'll bring him sure. home. You're paying for it. So oh, they they no. brought him over to Nebraska. And he is he was the sickest patient that they had brought to America yet. And unfortunately, I found out last night that the man, after being here for 36 hours, he died. So, but I, I'm I'm just thinking to myself, Nebraska apparently has been training for this type of event for seven years. What? Nebraska has been training to deal with some kind of outbreak like this for seven years. How do they know to train for something like this? Uh, are they, is it Ebola directly or is it some sort of, you know, potential plague? Um, I, I can't answer that. I can't Because if they're, it. if they're specific, I mean, for, if they're specifically saying, you know, that they train specifically for Ebola, you know, allow me to put on my tinfoil hat, but there's certainly something going on. If it's any sort of pandemic or potential pandemic or whatever rights for disease, you know, that's, you know, I mean, let's face it, Nebraska, Omaha is, you know, the central hub of the Midwest. So it makes sense that they would want a large city such as Omaha to be prepared for that kind of thing. Well, let's see what it says. This is actually a CNN article as as opposed as I am to CNN liberal, 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 liberal. Oh, did I mention liberal? Um, yeah. So this surgeon... Martin Salia, who is a legal, was a legal permanent resident of the United States, married to a U.S. citizen. Uh, he arrived Saturday afternoon. His situation was dire. It says he's extremely ill. We have multiple highly trained specialists who are experts in their fields targeting his most serious medical issues. Like I said, he has since passed away. And they said he was the sickest yet that had been brought to our country. Oh, wow. I don't know what to say for this. Should we be letting these people into our country not knowing enough about Ebola, but knowing as much as we do about Ebola? Wow. Should we, a, should we be letting them in? With people that have Ebola? Hmm. Yeah, that's... God, I mean, that that's really hard to say. I mean... Here, here's my my stance on this, and I've yet to be proven wrong about this or have anyone um, discuss about it, something differently. People that have Ebola are only going to transfer it to, to others that aren't affected by saliva, feces, urine, um, any sort of bodily function, essentially. So it's not airborne. No, that we don't, sure. we don't know. We don't know because they said they they admitted they don't know. Well, so far we don't know that it's not airborne. There hasn't been any. Okay, I agree. There hasn't been any evidence, but there hasn't you know been any sort of evidence that it is airborne. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But so, but so let, let's consider this. So, Africa has a lot of Muslim population, correct? Mm-hmm. So, um. The Muslim burial rites that they have involve stripping the body, 
of every single article of clothing and bathing the body. So the ones that die of Ebola are stripped, you know, stripped completely naked so that their skin becomes infected with the water and spreads to whoever is preparing and cleaning the body for burial. So anyone that's prepping this body, you know, gets infected with Ebola. So that being said, you're only really going to catch Ebola if you have any sort of, you know, real physical contact. And when I say kissing, sex, you know, bathroom duties, that kind of thing. So if bringing someone over to the country, um, I don't necessarily think that we shouldn't because if we stop them from flying, you know, they're going they're going to try and find other ways, either through a boat or, you know, however many ways there are of traveling. It's just, you know, j- we're not going to be able to stop them just by refusing to fly in and out of countries. I do think that proper caution needs to be made to make sure the victim is properly has some sort of, you know, headgear and bodysuit, of course. But I don't necessarily think that we should stop them from coming into the country. Uh, fair enough. There is a country out in Africa who has done that. They've cr- they've cut off their borders to the countries that have Ebola in them. So, you know, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Am I freaked out about Ebola? No. I mean, we've had patients with Ebola here in Georgia. Now, I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat for a moment here and point out mm-hmm. a few things. That Number one, I did a search for articles last night to see what strain of Ebola this was. Okay. And it's a mysterious new strain is what most of the articles said. Okay. And the point I'm going to connect this to is that you can go to the U.S. patent website and you can look up Ebola and the CDC has a patent on a strain of Ebola that they created in a laboratory. Yeah. I remember you bringing this up in one episode. So that's my first issue. And my second issue is the fact that these people are just coming up with these strains of Ebola, and we don't know where it's coming from. My third issue is that Nina Pham, the nurse, the first nurse from Texas who worked on the guy who died, initially he was the first case of Ebola in the U.S., they showed a picture of her hugging President Obama. Mm Mm-hmm. She did not look sick at all. And this is not something you can just get over. I mean, this is a very deadly disease. And she looked absolutely normal after just a few weeks. Well, they they wanted to put her under quarantine, but she refused to go under quarantine. Because while she had been exposed, she wasn't necessarily showing any of the symptoms, correct? No. You're talking about the lady in Maine. This is the lady from Texas. Oh, okay. This is the fir- very first nurse who was diagnosed. The one after her who worked with her was the uh, the Vincent lady who flew to Akron who had signs and still got on the airplane. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Nina Pham was the first nurse in Texas to get, to get hit. So she hugs President Obama. She didn't look sick at all. She did not look sick one bit. And the time frame to when she had Ebola to when it went away, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit at all. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking that it was a lie. I'm thinking oh, I'm thinking not she's not she was not sick. There's no way. There is this song called Ebola Don't Touch Your Friends. I know. It sounds like a joke. But it is this song. It's probably a PSA from Africa. Whatever country it came from, it probably is a PSA and we're sitting here laughing because what kind of a song is that? Don't touch your friends. Don't touch your friends. Ebola, don't touch your friends. Don't hug and kiss. Don't touch your friends. That's what it's, it's just really essentially what it is with this awful beat. It's, oh, it's terrible music. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't be laughing, but it reminds me of Ebola Chan from 4chan. Well, it should not be. It sh- it's probably, like I said, it's probably a public service announcement. But whoever did this video on YouTube, they put this music to all these pictures of, of actual Ebola pictures. And these people look so Oh, it's, it's it's nasty. My kids in class, their latest 
uh, insult toward each other is to tell people that they have Ebola. And I said, you say that one more time and I'll show you videos. You'll never want to talk about Ebola again. And they stopped right away because I think I'd give them nightmares. But I think the ironic thing is I have a child in my class who's originally from Nigeria and he's going around telling people they have Ebola. <laughs> wow. I told him, I was like, highly inappropriate, sir. Very, very inappropriate. So, yeah, so that that's my tinfoil hat moment right there. But I'll tell you this. Let's go back to what I'm teaching my kids in class since we're on that subject. There is an article. It is called High Tech School Monitoring Safety versus Privacy. This article is originally from stateline.org. It's adapted by this news site that I use to teach my kids. This one happens to be about the subject of kids being tracked with RFID chips in necklaces that they wear so the parents can see if they're at school, the -hmm. parents can see where they are at school, the parents can always track them and find them. They're talking about biometrics where kids get their palms or eyes scanned to buy lunch and to check out books at the school library. I mean, this is pretty scary stuff. And my students, my higher level reading group was reading this. And one girl goes, why is the government stalking us? I know. Where I go, um, there's this place where I go to lunch. It was actually in a school because they have a very good, um, very good cafeteria. And they do have a palm scanner. You know, the students that don't carry around their ID, they have their palm scans so that, you know, they can say, okay, this is the student. This is, you know... We're going to charge whatever student account they have, whether it's through a card or through a meal plan or whatever. We'll do it that way. And, you know, my first thought is that that is actually disgusting because whose hands are you talking? Yes, there's, you know, hand sanitizer, but not a lot of people pay attention to it and they just walk on their merry way. And it's just like, all right, well, what kind of things am I picking up here? Do you know if the parents have, uh, if they have parental permission to do that to the kids? I am not sure. It's at a college, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, see, okay, never mind about the college, but the thing is that really some really cool things happened with this article. Number one, remember, I only teach fifth grade. So the fact that somebody on her own accord said, why is the government stalking us? That's a very big conclusion for a fifth grader to come to. She did it on her own. I think it's very cool. That's, Another, re- that's really insightful. I'm proud of her. It is very, very insightful. I told the kids, too. I was like, biometric scanning. I said, they can scan your eyes. They can scan your hands. And they're just like, okay. And I was like, where's the information going? And they're just like, oh. I said, who's on the other side of that information? And they said, oh. I said, and say they took that information, whoever, we don't know who, is on the other side of that information, Say they took the information and they used it for nefarious deeds. What is what is happening with this information? They're like, we don't know. I was like, that's exactly the point. And another kid, I'm proud of him, he says, well, that's what the NSA is doing. These are fifth graders. Wow. The kids are like, this is creepy. They shouldn't be allowed to do this. We shouldn't be tracked. I mean, I'm just like seriously proud of these guys for putting these conclusions together. This is what I'm teaching in my classroom. This is what a public classroom looks like with a voluntarist anarchist teacher. We're not teaching anything that's not already out there. I'm not putting ideas in their head. We discussed this. And these are the thoughts that they fed back to me. I can't get in trouble for not for for listening to what they're saying for putting the conclusions together in their own minds. I'm very, very proud of them because this is stuff that they need to talk about. And I'll tell you, if if somebody out there was stealing uh, physical and biological information from my children without my permission, I would be livid. Yeah, but they're, dri- they're driving at it themselves. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And I explained to them about the RFID chip. I said, you can put it in your pet's. That's what they that's what they do. And I was like, so the difference between putting the chips in a pet and a human, if you get lost as a human, you can tell somebody where you live. If you pets, if they get lost, you can't they can't tell you where they live. I said, first of all, 
Second of all, think about it this way. I saw a guy on television who works for a company who produces RFID chips, and he had one in his arm, and he was happy about this. And he was demonstrating how it worked, and the news people had a scanner, and they scanned his arm, and all his personal information came up. Why in the world would you want to walk around with all your personal information in your arm? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I work with a guy that has um, all his um, IDs and cards um, in a uh, in like a copper sleeve. Like, I mean, it's a cl- you know, it's just like a paper sleeve, but in, inside it's lined with copper. And I asked him, it's just like it's so, it's so that they don't read my ID. And I'm like, that is really smart. I should totally get one. Yeah, and there's a lot of states actually that are starting to fight back on this. But I'll, I'll tell you really quickly, um, I do have Liberty Phoenix waiting to come in and join us. I do want to remind everybody that you can catch the show in its entirety on Thursdays from 4 to 6 on the Voluntary Virtues Network on YouTube. So if you miss any part of our show and you want to go back and listen or you just loved it that much and want to go back and listen, go listen on YouTube at the Voluntary Virtues Network. You can always call in and talk to us here at 347-324-3704. Call us. Talk to us. Tell us that you love us. Tell us that you like us. Tell us if you are enjoying the content or if you have something contrary to what we believe. Call up. Talk to us. And we'll be glad to talk to you, too. But we're going to go ahead and we are going to go to a commercial break so I can get him on the line with us so you guys stay tuned. My name is Dr. Eric Norman. I have studied vitamin B12 deficiency for over 35 years. Treatment and prevention of permanent disability. B12 deficiency can cause anemia, but also neurologic problems such as spinal cord degeneration, paranoia, and dementia. B12 is found only in animal sources, so vegetarians become deficient. As people age, they may not produce enough stomach acid, and it shrinks its fat to protein for absorption of B12 and becomes fissured. Up to 10% of seniors may have a normal serum B12 level, but a fissure B12 deficiency causing a three times greater risk for heart attack, stroke, or Alzheimer's. For more information, visit b12.com. Hi, I have a question for you. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you want a company that provides good quality ingredients and does not use artificial sweeteners? Look no further. Genesis Pure has a complete lineup of health and wellness, sports performance, and superfruit juices like noni and mangosteen that are pure wild harvested with no binders and fillers. The philosophy is simple. Cleanse the body of toxins, balance the body's pH and hormones, and build the body nutritionally. Every race has a starting line, and yours is cleanse, balance, build. Sign up for at least a 25% discount and include auto ship of at least one product to start building up 20% back in points for free products. It's a win-win Help fund our operation while you fund your body nutritionally. Start your journey at genesispure.com backslash freedomizerhealth. Again, that is genesispure.com backslash freedomizerhealth. You know the Constitution like the back of your hand. You've read books, listened to podcasts, attended lectures, surfed websites, and watched videos. You've made liberty your life's goal, but something seems to be missing. Stickers from LibertyStickers.com. Exercise your freedom of speech with the world's most dangerous bumper stickers. That's LibertyStickers.com. But wait. There's more. You can buy Liberty Stickers wholesale. Get them for 99 cents each when you put 100 or more in your shopping cart in any combination. Sell them or give them away. They're great for gun shows, flea markets, fairs, outreach, and more. Earn extra money, promote freedom, and spread the word. Need custom stickers, labels, or decals for your organization or business? Liberty Stickers makes them. Go to libertystickers.com to order or call 877-873-9626. Libertystickers.com, the world's most dangerous stickers. Okay, so apparently Liberty Stickers is the world's most dangerous stickers. What makes a sticker dangerous? I think it's because it has a gun on it. Aren't aren't pictures of guns dangerous? No, it forces, no. It forces you to think against 
what the government is doing. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I thought the only dangerous gun was one made out of Pop-Tart. You see, now, I don't think it's okay that uh, those stickers are forcing people to think. That's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a violation of the NAP. What do you guys think of that concept? You know, uh, being so controversial and in people's faces that they, you know, and so unrelenting with in your interactions with like friends and family that you basically force them to consider these arguments. Do you think that is a uh, violation of the NAP? No, because they can choose whether or not to. They can uh, walk, to they get can involved. Walk away. Sure, yeah. they can walk away and choose not to observe it. It's their decision. So, what about, what about so. with children? Um, yeah, what do you think about with children? Because they're essentially a captive audience. Well, here's my question to you. Is keeping them away from information that you deem too difficult or not appropriate for them to understand, is that a violation of their rights? Keeping them away from information? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'd say I would say so. Um, you're preventing them. You know, it, it depends on the methods that you would use, I suppose. Um, if you are physically restraining them from going to read a book, then yes, that is a violation of their natural rights. No, not like that. I mean, like, say there's a subject that you don't talk to your kids about because you don't feel it's appropriate for their age for whatever reason. And I know that you have younger daughters. That's why I'm mentioning this. So are you preventing them from exercising their rights as human beings or because you kept this information away from them? Well, I'm kind of in the opposite of that because my children don't live with me. They live with their mother, um, and they've you know been raised on God-forsaken television for the last seven years of uh, my oldest daughter's life. Or I'm sorry, the last eight years of my oldest daughter's life, and the last five years of uh, I'm sorry, six years of my youngest daughter's life. So I'm kind of on the opposite spectrum of that. I'm trying to get them to see it as much as possible. You know, every time that I come over there, I'm trying to present the information to them every single time. It got it got to this point so bad where they would beg me not to put on another episode of Liberty's Kids. <laughs> Remember that old PBS show? Wait a minute. Is that the is that the what the it's the cartoon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was the cartoon. That was back in the when I in my minarchist days. Oh, because you know what? They oh, the school where I was last year for 2 months Every time that they had free time that they were allowed to watch a video, they always asked me to put on Liberty Kids. That's why I know what that is. Otherwise, I had never heard of it before. I grew up watching that show. I loved that show. I had no idea. Wow, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> but like um, the other day, I was over there seeing my, my girls, and I, I had spoken to my oldest daughter on the phone, and I was like, you know, uh, what do you want to do when I come by? She's like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, we could watch this you know, Frozen, some movie that's you know, just, oh my God, it's just, hey, some more of the, uh, have some more bread and circus, would you, while your empire falls down around you. Um, and I was like, you know what, no, I, you know what, baby, I want you to understand why I'm leaving for a year. I want you to understand and truly grasp the concept of, of, of why daddy is leaving you guys for a year. And I think the movie that I wanted to watch with them was 101 Reasons That Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. Um, and of course, they had absolutely no interest in seeing it whatsoever. And I tried uh, talking to their grandmother um, but as I was leaving about it. I was commenting that I had wanted to watch that movie with everyone, everyone in the house. Um, both of their, their grandparents, her mom, um, their stepdad, them. I wanted everyone to sit there and, and watch it with me because I, I personally feel like this is a pretty big deal. I mean, I'm leaving for a year, and they have they had absolutely no interest whatsoever. And I'm like, you know, guys, you, you're you're. I told I was speaking to my uh to my ex mother in law, which was never in law, just mother in chosen to be my next other mother, because I've known the woman for 20 years. But um, I was talking to her, and I was like, you know, this is really really important to me. Really, the fact that you guys aren't even willing to give me an hour. One measly hour of your time is so uh, – uh, I, I use the term disrespectful, but I don't think that was quite apropos. Uh, I think there was a more accurate word that I could have used. Um, and they were like they, – they didn't really have anything to say about it. 
at all. And uh, it was just one of those things where it's like, that that family just tiptoes around issues. You know, they don't they don't ever say anything. They don't come right out and speak the truth. Um, like just that day, um, I my mother in law, um, I noticed her live blatantly three times in the hour and a half that I was there, flat out blatant lies. And when you when you come to realize the ideas of of liberty and 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 self ownership and moral responsibility you start to notice how tyranny and force and immorality and violence pervades dang near everything. Every single person on a daily basis probably does commit three felonies a day without even having any, any idea of it. Because it's so prevalent in, in our society that it, it's, it's normalized. Um, and I don't even think she was aware or considered those three actions, um, lies. And I have no idea where I was going with that. I just rambled on for a minute, but. Well, no, and we rambled earlier, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll say this. We'll, we'll go back to talking about the article that we were talking about before we went to break. We were talking about RFID tips and biometric scanning of eyes and hands for kids who are purchasing lunch or at school or checking out library books. I think it's, it's drastic. Um, but we were talking about how one of the gentlemen who works at one of the RFID companies who produces chips, he had one placed in his arm. He's like, it doesn't hurt. You can't feel it at all. And the newscasters took a scanner, and they scanned his chip just to see what kind of information would pop up. And it pulled up all the information that he entered. So you can enter the information that you want to pop up. But mm -hmm. who's on the other side of this information is what I want to know. And why are we so apt to trust these people? He's like, oh, you entered, it's safe, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. I, I don't want some chip in my arm. So there are states that are starting to fight back. And uh, it says were that. They, uh, were they trying to say, like, you know, there's no way that a third party could ever get a hold of the scanning technology? I don't know about. Do they realize that the Internet exists? I don't know about that. Um, this was uh, art, it was a report that I watched a while back, but it, it triggered the memory of watching this report. Um, after I read this article with my kids, this started. They started talking about some states that are fighting back about this. Uh, Florida became the first state to ban the use of biometric identification in its schools. Kansas said the information cannot be collected without student or parental consent. New Hampshire, Colorado, North Carolina said their state education departments cannot collect and store biometric data in student records. New Hampshire and Missouri lawmakers said schools cannot require students to use ID cards equipped mm -hmm. with video frequency identification technology. RFID technology tracks students by means of badges or tags with embedded computer chips. And the chips either broadcast a radio signal or are read when students go near a radio frequency reader. Which makes me think, if you just have to go to a radio frequency reader, where else can these the information from these chips be picked up? I mean, is it a certain scanner? Is it a certain reader? Or can, can it, there be a security breach and anybody can get this info? It sounds to me like if anybody can get this info, you've got a whole new breeding ground for, for stalkers, for child molesters, for people who have committed crimes against children, kidnapping. Wait, what? Thankfully, we have the wonderful invention of blockchain technology where you can put a private key on the chip itself and only give out the public key to your doctor or, um, you know, whatever, you know, the, the paramedics that are treating you. Hopefully, you're not unconscious at, at that time. Um, but you can give out this private key or the this public key to people. And then utilizing the blockchain, you could access the information that's on that chip through a trustless system uh, where you know you don't you don't have to worry about well who's who's got this and and you can make that that public key randomized every single time so I mean it's possible to secure an RFID chip uh, with the technology that we have but I, I doubt that the government entities that are going to be controlling this are going to be apt to actually use technology that's going to prevent that's going to protect the individual's rights. I'm not putting chips in my arm. 
Uh, neither am I. <clears throat> no. Oh. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying that it is possible to secure those. Well, this well, guy, I'll tell you real quick the article, and then, Danica, I'll turn it over to you for a second. Uh, Jay Fry, who's the head of a company called Identimetrics, said that biometric identification is used in more than 1,000 school districts in 40 states, from Alaska to Long Island to New York. He said, it's more secure from a privacy standpoint than a student ID, which has a name, picture, and school on it. He came up with the idea of using biometrics in schools in 2002 when he was a middle school principal in, principal in Illinois. And he says... Hey. He says that it's easier to use biometric because you can't lose your finger like you can use a card that has an RFID chip in it. Don't! Really? Yep, that's what he said. That's just completely false. Let, oh. People lose their fingers every day, buddy. Although that was in comparison and relation to the actual ID. So it is much to lose your ID than it is your finger. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it, it is, for sure. Unless you work in a, in a lumber yard. I mean, I, I would have to say that... that or a warehouse. Exponentially. Say again? Or a warehouse. Or a warehouse. You know, It would be an exponentially larger chance to lose your finger in that setting than, say, perhaps in, you know, sixth grade gym. Or sure, yeah. You know, some 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 states, I'm sure there are some public schools in this country that's in this geographic location boundaries unknown. <laughs> As I, I'm sure there's still some schools that have a sixth grade wood shop, so maybe not. I think uh, you know it depends on the it depends on the the curriculum that's uh, offered. Well, this this lady in Florida, she's a Florida state senator. Her name is Dorothy, I think it's Hugh Kill, Huckle, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She uh, stepped in when local school systems began scanning the students' retinas on school buses without parental permission. permission. Right. Um, and they explained that the retina is a layer of tissue lining the inner eye. She said she proposed the law to ban the use of biometric identification in Florida schools. She said, you don't need to collect biometric information to buy a hot dog in the school cafeteria or check out a library book. She said she's not opposed to technology, but she's concerned about the security of data. She said, once you collect the information, there is no rolling back. You that know, it is so good to be a capitalist, make some money, get your children out of the public schools and put them in a Montessori school or homeschool them, for Christ's sake. People, this, these places are poison. Well, I will say this. Well, poison unless you have a teacher like Miss Parsons. But I will say this, that Tessa's in the chat room saying, great, now crooks will cut off your fingers to steal your identity. And, you know, I, I will say this to what Tessa is saying, that Jose Canseco lost his finger in an accident and it was reattached and it just fell off while he was playing poker. So I, you were talking, they were talking about how nobody will lose their finger. Well, that's just not true. Jose Canseco did. It was on TV. It's, it happened, man. That sounds like a very terrible Game of Thrones chapter. Someone losing their finger. Well, he's a former baseball player, and I'm just like, whatever, dude. I don't care about your finger. Stop picking your nose, and it wouldn't fall off. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so biometric testing or scanning, excuse me, for kids and RFID chips following our children around. And even if it was a parental choice, I sure as hell would not give my children permission to have chips placed anywhere on their body or have biometric testing done. I don't think I don't think anybody should scan have their palm scanned. I told the kids, I was like, every person in the United States has their own set of fingerprints that are unique to them. What is a company gonna do? With this information, what are they going to, you don't know what they're going to do with it. You don't know if they have a way to copy it and reproduce it somewhere that's private and they use your information to, co to commit a crime. Sure, you don't absolutely. No. So, no, no, I don't care how convenient and easy it is. You know, every day, my cafeteria at school, they use numbers to identify the kids and they just pound in their numbers and they seem to get through the line really quickly. So, I'm really not sure what the difference is between scanning and, and stuff, but having lines of kids lined up just to put their hand on something and then have it scanned, it just reminds me of something robotic and scary. Well, I mean, Big Brother is going to be watching you even more so now. 
well, Danica, I'm going to get your handprint and I'm going to reproduce you and clone you. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> um, I was telling Mandy this. I um, don't think you caught this, Liberty. Um, but I was telling her that I was talking to a gentleman at work and um, what was it? Oh, yeah, he was, we were going to be, a bunch of us were going to be going to go take a break and, we'll, you know, we go get coffee, we walk around the building and whatnot. So he was grabbing his uh, his debit card to make sure it was in his card sleeve. So when he pulls out his card sleeve, I noticed that there's some coppery stuff in the card sleeve. So I said, oh, what's that for? And he says, oh, he's just like, it's just so it's so that they don't read my identification so that not, so that it doesn't get, you know, RFID scans. I'm like, that is so brilliant. It's essentially a Faraday case. case. And apparently you can pick them up for maybe like a couple of dollars at, any, at Walmart or wherever. And I'm like, I've got to go get myself some. Wally world. My dad went to, okay, get this, all right? My dad's a Colts fan. He drove from Pennsylvania to Indianapolis just to watch a Colts game. And he went into a Walmart. We go re- re- in, in, yeah, you're reconnected. We And he went into Walmart in Indianapolis and found all of this Colts gear and said on Facebook, oh my gosh, this is heaven. <laughs> And I, I, I wrote on his page, and I was like, uh, two words that you'll never, ever see in the same sentence except on your page, Walmart and heaven. Yeah, I can't say I've ever heard of Walmart and heaven. That's that's terrifying to me. Especially with all those people from peopleinwalmart.com. Oh, peoplearr.com is like one of my favorite websites. Oh, figures. Only Danica. Oh, no. Why do you think they're still going? Lots of people like it that aren't just like me, silly girl. What I really want to know, though, is how many of those people actually are from Walmart? I don't know. Like, sometimes you see pictures of just the same kind of people, and you're like, oh, wait, all the people there that go to Walmart wearing, like, straw hats and overalls that are dirty and probably smell like goat piss? Yeah, they're from Arkansas. Well, you, you've apparently been around a lot of people from Arkansas to know that. I have not, but I'm just telling you what I see on people at Walmart.com. Aha. Aha. Well, heaven, Walmart. Not the no. same place. Well, you know, I know that in some no. small towns, so Walmart is literally their mall. It's true. <laughs> it is. Oh, I think I hear Phoenix trying to get... I was just saying, the the photos that are over there on those websites... Um, I really don't see a problem with it. You know, let them get down how they live. Fashion is such a distraction from evolution uh, that I, it, it seems uh, counter-moral. But even giving a crap about fashion. Oh, we don't care about fashion. We're laughing at the people who shop at Walmart. Well, yes. And what what are the reasons? Why? What what is it in the culture that we? That pervades our, you know, our existence right now, our everyday, you know, comings and goings and you know, nuances that we say between individuals that makes the 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 site people from Walmart so comedic. It's the culture of well, these are the lower class people. They're uh, most of them are, are, are you know extremely overweight or you know have you know ridiculous uh, mullets or expressing <laughs> themselves walking around as. <laughs> Best <laughs> um, you know, there's there's all these snap judgments of individuals made on that website, and I think that's what I find disgusting about it. Um, I couldn't, I could care less about the people. I think the site itself is offensive because it reduces the ability for individuals to stop judging one another. I mean, it's that's it's essentially it's bread and butter. That's where they make their money is judgment. You know, they they promote a society of judgmental uh, individuals and and points of view that are just out to be little people for for a cheap laugh. And it seems it seems completely counterproductive to what I feel as the true purpose of humanity, which is evolution. Well, I have never been to the website personally, and I could care. I could care less about the site, quite honestly. So, no problems there. But I mean, if people enjoy it; they enjoy it. It's, it's them. That's their thing. But as for the site itself, like you said, I don't really care. 
Well, I mean, it's just, it's like the onion or click hole. I mean, they're going to be posting sometimes very tasteless articles, making fun of someone or something. And, you know, some might find it tasteless, some might find it humorous. Well, you know, I don't know. I didn't think that the comment or subject would bring up such a controversy on the show. Well, I don't think it's necessarily tasteless. Um, I mean, because it does cater towards a certain taste. Um, the 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 definition for the word tasteless, I think, is far too vague uh, to actually use to define that. Um, I mean, it's just it's just kind of like you're walking, you know, in prehistoric times, you see a dinosaur, and you would never freaking see a dinosaur, and you just you have to get a picture and show the entire world. <clears throat> all right. Live in America, the people from Walmart are all around us. Those aren't the dinosaurs you know, were in America white, too. But what I'm saying is, those aren't the white unicorn, the white stag, you know, that that mythical beast that you only see every now and again. Well, there's you know dinosaurs that still live among us. They're just small and more compact, and sometimes harder to see. Well, this conversation has taken such an interesting turn. <laughs> What's I'm next? To keep it intellectually honest. What? I mean, it, trust me, I'll, I'll look at some, I, I've looked at those photos and I've laughed myself. You know, I don't deny that at all. I mean, I do find it funny, but it, that's not to say that I can't remove that pathos point of view and, and look at it from the, from a purely logical standpoint. Well, Tess is as far the, as, you know, the aims that I'd like to see happen and the goals in my life. Tess is in the chat room saying that that site is distasteful. Wow, that's certainly not the topic of subject or sentence that I thought would bring us to silence. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I admit some of the things there are just kind of really questionable. I mean, I haven't been on that side wall, but for the most part, they don't they don't really show people's faces there, do they? They don't they don't really show the faces of the people that are shopping. Usually, it's the side or the back end. Um, I, I will say that I don't care. If you want to go laugh at that, I mean, it's, there's always going to be something that people are going to find humorous that you're going to find offensive or vice versa. Right. There, You can't go around pleasing the world. And, you know, he's certainly welcome to his opinion. I, I think he's having some serious uh, technology issues. Um, but... Yeah, something's always going to offend somebody. I mean, something that could be completely harmless. Sure. You know, it, you can't worry about what's going to offend people. You just can't. Man, uh, man not, he, you're uh, smelly. Uh, I hope that offends you. To convince, I'm simply trying to convince you guys with a logical argument of my opinion so that maybe you guys can feel the same way. And the more people that will start to take up that idea, it could spread per, throughout the culture. Um and there will there won't be a market for a website called People from Walmart because it just won't exist. But if I go shopping at Walmart, aren't I technically a People of Walmart? I lost that last part. Say again. I said if I go shopping at Walmart, aren't I technically a People of Walmart? Anyone yeah. anyone who shops at Walmart is a People of Walmart. If you wear, like, pajama bottoms and are really frumpy. Although I doubt you would find, you know, um, Rob Lowe or Angelina Jolie on there. Although that is more of the uh, the mythical beast type thing. You know, you don't really see celebrities. Unless you're going in, to one in Hollywood. I doubt they have Walmarts in Hollywood. And then probably the no, not Walmart. New York, but probably Hollywood. No, they don't build Walmarts in places that are very expensive tax-wise. They don't even have Walmarts in Atlanta. Are you really? No, I'm serious. I mean, we have three three or two where I live. I'm trying to think. We have two where I live. But you're right outside. You're not in the actual like, city line, correct? Right, and that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I, I don't even live in the same county as Atlanta. So they don't have any in I was surprised the other day to see a Goodwill in Atlanta, to be honest. Um, closer to the higher upscale part of it uh, at, for, at that but yeah walmart will not build 
where they have to pay high taxes. And I guarantee if you put a Walmart in any of the huge cities in any state, it's going to be a very, very high tax area. They won't put a Walmart there. They don't want to pay high taxes. Well, I think that they're um, they're not allowed to build anywhere in any of the um, New York City or its five boroughs simply because it would just take away too much of the smaller shops, smaller mom and pop shops. Which is a good idea. Hmm. It's a good idea not to. I think you know that's a that's a good step to protect the uh, small mom and pops. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I like I mean. I like that they do that. At the same time, I can't help but think, is there, like, a better way to go about it? Because, you know, the city of New York, you know, government, they know we refuse to, like, you know, you're not allowed to build here. You're allowed to build on, on the outskirts, just not inside. And it's just thinking, it's not that they're saying that they don't want a Walmart nearby or near-ish. I mean, if you've ever been in New York City, you realize how hard, how <clears throat> long it takes you to get anywhere. But... I just, I'm just, I guess I'm just not sure. You know, on one hand, I hate the government saying, no, you're not allowed to do yeah, that. But at the same time, I certainly do appreciate that they're, you know, wanting to protect the culture of their, of their city. Well, I mean, land in New York City, too, for, like you said, for anybody who's been to New York, is it's few and far between. You know, you can't just build wherever you want to. You usually have to knock something down first. Or build up. Or build up. So, Bill, I think also there's there's a level of people saying if you build a Walmart in New York City, it's going to make New York City trashy. Or they feel it would be trashy. I mean, I guess Walmart just has, I mean, it obviously has a very bad, um, how should I say this, a very, a very bad image. You know, it's got an image for being among those that are cheap or inexpensive and you know, lower income families and not so how to this hygienic people sometimes. Um, so you know they have kind of a bad you know bad image. But you know, I mean, there there could be some semi neat WalMarts. Oh, there could be. You know, but I think you'll never hear somebody say, "Oh yeah, we're a rich Walmart." Sure, absolutely. Well, I will say this. Uh, Liberty Phoenix has decided to restart his computer, and I think that is a good time to take a commercial break. Before we do that, I do want to remind everybody that you are welcome to call in. The number here is 347-324-3704. If you want to call in to talk about something that we've already talked about, to bring up a new topic, to argue with us about something that we've talked about, to share your opinions, share your views, tell us you love us, tell us you like us, just Call us and talk to us if you want. We don't care. Just give us a call. Again, that number is 347-324-3704. You can always join us in the chat room at freedomizerradio.com. Create a name. Come join us. And also, just to let everybody know that if you missed the beginning of the show or you just love us so much that you want to listen to it all over again, we do syndicate on Thursdays from 4 to 6 Eastern at the Voluntary Virtues Network on YouTube. We are always glad to have fans, so tune in and listen. We, we do love our people. So we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back after the most amazing messages. Get ready for the epic new documentary adventure ride of your life. Shades the motion picture. Hub you into the globalist domain and embellish in Burma's film. Nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works the way you think it does. We have never let them know that their world government has been identified and they thought they just closed the world economy to bring in a worldwide police state, but it's the dead, it's gonna bring them down. You have to stand up. Speak up, speak out. Shade the motion picture. Order your copy of the DVD today at Shade the Motion Picture. Vaccines are required for students, employees, immigrants, military members, and international travel. Do you know how to legally avoid them? 
This is vaccine rights attorney and Freedomizer radio host Alan Phillips. My vaccine exemption ebook can help you avoid the mistakes that have cost others their exemption rights. Get the authoritative guide to vaccine legal exemptions, an ebook available at freedomizerradio.com and vaccinerights.com. Let freedom ring throughout the land. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, warriors, you are the resistance. Warriors, you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. Read about it in the Sovereign newspaper of the resistance. Available now at newsstands everywhere. The Sovereign is a monthly 24-page tabloid newspaper featuring incendiary content about life during wartime in the age of Obama. Warriors, keep to date every month. Remember to read The Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available at newsstands everywhere. This alert is for all you boppers out there in the big city, all you street people with an ear for the action. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, Warriors, you are the resistance. This is Mercy. Mine will be the last voice you will ever hear. Don't be alarmed. Please learn more about Freedomizer Radio by going to freedomizerradio.com and also Facebook us right at freedomizerradio.com. Catch you there. Good evening. Ancient of Days returns to freedomizerradio.com. Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. For 90 minutes of adventures in history, ancient and modern, plus current events, here on FreedomizerRadio.com. See you there, Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. Okay, and we're back, and just want to say hi to Tessa, who's hanging out in the chat room listening to the PM show tonight. Thank you, Tessa, for your loyalty. We absolutely adore you. We love you, and we thank you for your support. That was her show, Ancient of Days, which is here on the Freedomizer Radio Network as well. And if it mentioned what time and day her show is on, I wasn't paying attention. I'm so sorry, Tessa, but they heard the commercial, so it is, I'm sure, very effective. Uh, but we are back. Phoenix is having some technical difficulties. I think that he is back successfully. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, he's back. All right. He is back. I will say very, very excited to be able to say this, that next Wednesday we will be broadcasting. Two of us will be broadcasting from Illinois. So just one of us. Yeah, so this will this will be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so it's good. You said the reason you're having technical difficulties is because your roommates are taking up the bandwidth? I'm pretty sure. That's going to be really interesting when my, when I bring my laptop with me. Oh, boy. Yeah, we're, it's, going to, it's going to be a fun show. <laughs> it's going to be really fun trying to trying to get us on. So I'm sure I we'll see lots of curse words. <laughs> You're going to be cursing a lot? I don't know any more than usual. I mean, we don't generally curse on this show. No, we don't. We did, I think, two weeks ago, but I was just like, all right, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud, folks. Reel it in. Because uh, proof, proof doesn't like us to curse on the air. So I try not to, but you know, I'm sure there's going to be lots of times where you hit the mute button and lots of curse words will be heard, at least on my end. Well, I, you know, there's always alternatives. Cheese and crackers. Oh, darn it. Oh, fudge. Fudge. Yeah, there you go. Fudge. Ah, that's crummy. <laughs> Boy. Well, well that, gosh darn it. That just burnt my wick. Well, see, you can always <laughs> just self-censor. It's it's really easy to censor. Like, um, you, I used to do a lot of karaoke. So, you know, whenever you do, like, rap songs and so forth, uh, if there's a, a lot of curse words in there, I just got really adept at cutting them out. And it was, so, it was the real... I mean, it was... Uh, it became... Rather easy. Censorship. So, uh, Censorship. That just burns my wick. <laughs> you know what really grinds my gears? Censorship. <laughs> oh, my God. We could keep this going all night long. 
<laughs> Gosh darn it, that just makes me upset. Man, that Mandy person, she is such a, you know, lady. Oh, ouch. <laughs> I'm so hurt. Oh, I don't know if I can come back from that one. Yeah, that Mandy, she is such a... You're you such know, an upstanding loose, citizen. You're a citizen. She's such a, she's such a loose woman. She's such a, you know, proud woman. Hey, excuse me, <laughs> citizen. Listen here. Ooh, that's an insult. Citizen. Ouch. You mental follower. You do realize we talked, you know, what a citizen really is on Free Talk Live, right? Well... So you to Free Talk Live, right? Uh, no, I'm usually at school. <gasps> at seven at night? Yes, ma'am. Really? That late? I stay often until eight o'clock at night. I do. You realize it's on your phone, right? Um, uh, tune in app. Okay. Well, next subject. Um, <laughs> okay. So in all seriousness, now the reason that I mean, you mentioned that, but the reason that I brought that up is because uh, Liberty Phoenix, you posted something in our podcast chat that we actually talked about on Monday night um, about being a good citizen. It's a worksheet, and I absolutely love the fact that you posted this because I have a subscription to this website for these worksheets, and I pulled it up and I looked at it, and it's all about being a good citizen. And it says, what is a citizen? If you were born in the United States, you're a citizen. That means you're a member of our country. Notice they used our. How dare they? This is not my country. This is just the country where I reside. Thank you very much. Sometimes people who are not born here want to become citizens. They do this by asking the government to make them a citizen. This is called naturalization. What I don't understand is little Emma, 23, she marked out the word naturalization. I don't know why. But it says, when you're a citizen, you have rights. Rights are special privileges the government gives you. God! (laughs) This is education! (laughs) Oh, it it gets worse. Danica, have you read this? Yeah, we talked on Free Talk Live, which you would know about if you listened. Well, I thought thought they originally had posted this. Got it from another group, but they got it also. Well, it was all over Facebook. I mean, that's where Ian eventually got it. Well, the thing is, though, is that, like I said, I have a subscription to this site. I can pull this up. Um, it says, rights are special privileges the government gives you. In our country, you have free speech. That's a lie. You are also given the right to choose a religion. In America, the press is free to tell you what is happening in the world. That's another lie. The Bill of Rights lists the freedoms given to citizens. These rights are very important. Many people in the world do not have we do. That's right, because they're more free than us, these fake things we call freedoms. Because the government gives us rights, we have the duty to be good citizens. But what does it mean to be a good citizen? How can you be a part of giving back for the freedom you have? Being a good citizen means you show your love to your country. I will be proud to tell you guys I did not stand up for the pledge this morning. And this is a big deal because I stopped saying it, and I just stood there. And today I was like, no, no, I'm sitting. I stayed seated, and the kids who stayed with me, I didn't say a word to them. Not one word. Um, it says, being a good citizen means you show your love to your country. You can. This is not my country. You can do this by being courteous to the symbols in America, singing our national anthem, and respecting our flag are ways to show how much the United States means to you. Being a good citizen also means obeying the laws in your community and school. Laws are made to help you and keep you safe. Right. Obeying the law also shows your respect for others. You can also treat people with kindness. Being friendly to those who are different from you is also a part of being a good citizen. Perhaps there is someone new at school. One way to be a good citizen is to be welcoming to that person. Good citizens take part in their community. They give to the poor. They help clean parks. Now, giving to the poor is not a bad idea, but... If you have to, you should say giving to the poor voluntarily. They help clean parks. They keep up to date on current events. They help, oh, then they help whenever they can. It is also important to conserve our natural resources. Using energy wisely, treating animals fairly, and picking up trash all help to give back to our country. Someday, 
This is where it gets very tense. Someday you will be given the right to vote. This is an honor. By using this right, you can take part in the government. Even now you can find out about politics. Your parents and teachers are good sources of information, only if they're Miss Parsons. Yeah. You can ask them how they feel about the government. You can also ask them questions about candidates in an election. Gathering information will help you make decisions when you can vote. When you begin to work, you'll have to pay taxes. Taxes help to run our country. Roads, schools, police forces, firefighters, and government workers are all paid from taxes. Being a member of our country is a wonderful privilege. When you work to be a good citizen, everyone benefits. Isn't that beautiful? I think I have to vomit. <laughs> That's how I felt after hearing it, too. Um, that yeah. thing is dripping with propaganda. There's not a single li- line in there that or sentence that I could get through without pointing out the 15 different fallacies that are within this thing. Damn it. I love my country. And it hurts me so much when you talk about my country this way. That's okay, because your country doesn't give a crap about you. <gasps> Sorry, I'm having a Glenn Beck moment. Okay, I'm good. I'm oh, good. Glenn Beck. Um, but in all seriousness, this is... Foremost, this the entire premise of the entire page is completely bullshit. There's no such thing as a as a citizen. Period. It is a there is no such thing as legal this, fiction. This it's a legal fiction. Absolutely. I'm really disappointed you guys feel this way because it's about as real as Pandora. I I love this article. I love this Pandora's box or Pandora the music player. Pandora the city the the set from that uh, Dances with Wolves remake. Oh. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> I love this. I I really loved this reading. I loved it. I loved you it. loved what? This reading. Being a good citizen article. I oh, it. yeah. And I I think my brain shrunk like 30%. Oh, no. I printed it out and hung it on my wall because I put stars all over it and colored it red, white, and blue. Yeah, I am. Um, Don't you love sarcasm? Yeah, sarcasm is absolutely wonderful. I just, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I brought... I brought this. Well, the, I'm bringing this up again because I spoke on Free Talk Live. I, I wondered um, out loud if this was the work of one individual teacher or if it was a school system. Uh, no, and Ian, one lady wrote it. Yeah, Ian was suggesting that it was probably one teacher that wrote it for some sort of government class. Just thinking, wow, how many minds has she tried to influence with this? And what? And the yikes! I'm, you know, I can't imagine too many parents would be really happy with all, you know, with even all of the virtues that she quote unquote pulled out. But do you know what I told my kids though? I told my students, I was like, you know what? If you feel the need to go vote, go do it. If you don't feel you need to vote, don't do it. It doesn't matter. It is your choice. Nobody should force you to go and vote. And if you don't vote, it doesn't mean that you committed some crime or didn't do something right. And if you don't like the leadership because you didn't go vote, you have every right in the world to complain about them. Don't you want to be right? Oh yeah. But don't you want to be like Australia, where if you don't vote, you get fined fifty dollars, and then if you don't, you know, pay that fifty dollars, I bet eventually they're going to try and put you in a cage. Um, if only you try to resist being put in a cage, you'll probably be killed. Only if I'm the one doing the fining, so I can collect the revenue. Well, okay, that's that's, that's a joke. That's a joke because those are taxes and fines, and I don't. That's a hot mess. I will tell you something. That's I was not fines. They're ex, it's extortion. Period. Yeah. Well, I was driving to work. I think like three days ago and I was going about 80 on the freeway. Now, mind you, it was, I think a 55 speed limit, but we're talking downtown Atlanta. If you don't go with the flow of traffic, you get run over and I'm, I'm going 80 along with traffic and this Georgia state patrol car is pulling up behind me and all of a sudden they switch lanes, but I'm just thinking, wow, I, I so could have been pulled over. And he didn't. He just went on his merry way. So I guess he wasn't pulling anybody over. But, I mean, dude, I was I was scared. I don't want to I don't want to pay any money to those people. You know, I was driving along one time in uh, the lane just to the right of the, of the, of the far left. Lane. Um, and there was a cop sitting there in the, in the, in the fast lane. And I was probably doing, I don't know, 65, 60. 
he was doing about 60. And I passed him, and I look over at him, and I kind of nod to him. Um, just keep on going about my merry way, keep continuing, because, you know, the, it's, it, in Chicago land, it's pretty much the same. You know, at, If you're in the far left, you're doing 80. If you're in the one to the right of that, you're doing 70. If you're in the right lane, you're doing 60. That's just how f- traffic flows around here. Um, so I just kind of nodded my head, like, you know, hey, this is something everybody knows. Speeding is all bullshit. And it'll just, you know, whatever. And uh, he he pulls back along, looks over, and he's like, dude. He, like, puts his arms up, like, really? And then he just does, like, 5-5 five, five to me. I'm like, come on, really, co- dude, seriously? And he's like, yeah. You know, just it, all, in, all in head motions and hand motions. And uh, I'm like, all right, whatever. And I slow down. But I thought it was really hilarious, his, uh, his response to that. What is 5-5? Five, five? He was trying to tell me that speed limit was 50. And he's going 60? Yeah. <laughs> Hypocrite. Hypocrite, hypocrite. But then again, if you tried to pull him over or do a citizen's arrest, you wouldn't get away with it. Oh, I'd probably be dead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of, I almost lost my life the other day. I almost got run over by a tractor trailer. And how exactly did this happen? I was on the freeway and he wasn't watching where he was going. He pulled out in front of me. Everybody likes... In the on-ramp? Um, yeah. He was coming out to the... In, he was he was merging into the, the lane from the on-ramp, or were you coming off into the, into the lane from the on-ramp? Wait, what? <laughs> Which one of you were merging into traffic from the on-ramp? Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Like, I was, I was pulling onto the freeway. I was clearly on the ramp, and he all of a sudden went from the uh, side road next to me, right in front of me all of a sudden. So, like, you were at his back right corner? No. No, his back left corner. He tried to pull left. Or he did pull left. But oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I almost got hit. That was a, not a fun experience. The, the last view of life that I want to see is not an advertisement for a tractor-trailer company. What well, I always a, try to use the... Uh, what a miserable view. But, yeah, so thanks, tractor-trailer. Much appreciated. When I honked at him, he flicked me off. That's justifiable. It's real. Wh- what? Sorry, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, well, you got the queen of sarcasm with her own game. Well played, sir. Well played. Well, when does thank you? Sorry. Yep. Your point in your favor. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, we had a number of things to talk about. Danny is taking a break. She is on the phone. Oh, Danica. I'm back now. Oh, she's back. Dun, yeah, dun, dun. the uh, the partner wanted to see what I want to do for dinner, and I'm like, I'm not really hungry right now, so he's on his own. Ha, ha, ha. Well, Mandy, I've got an article here from BuzzFeed if you want to go. Okay. Well- hey, 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 I haven't been able to share anything, Phoenix. You're so selfish. Oh, by all means, go ahead. No, go ahead, and then we'll turn it over to Phoenix. Take it away, Danica. <laughs> My goodness, you did such a show hop. Um, just a co- just well, just a couple of personal announcements and a, um, a couple of actual things I wanted to bring up. So, uh, lots of things have been going on the last uh, week or so. Uh, I have adopted another feline kitty. Her name is Chloe, and she is very cute. And this is the funny thing about it. So, I have a friend of mine that rents a house here in New Hampshire. Now, this friend had to evict his tenants because they were just not pain, they were being just terrible, horrible, despicable people. So when said tenants finally left, uh, my friend went to go clean the house, and he finds a cat left behind. And this cat is extremely sweet, extremely friendly. Uh, unfortunately, he, is, he isn't able to take the cat away. <laughs> He's not available to the cat right now. I'm just like, well, I have a cat, but I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I fell in love with this cat. She was just very sweet. She was very nuzzling. She loved to perch on my shoulders. And then she would like curl up on my chest under my chin. 
and take a nap. It was just the most adorable thing I'd ever seen. But there were a couple of there were a couple of things. I already had a cat, obviously, and I had no idea where this cat had been. I wasn't sure if she was going to be bringing in something that could pass on to the other cat. So I ended up taking it into the shelter. So I found out a couple of things. There were uh, so I had one of two options. The first option that I could take would would involve me actually surrendering the cat. Surrendering the cat would allow the shelter to um, spay her, give her the vaccines that she needed, do the checkups. Everything to make sure that she not only was healthy but didn't have any other um, any other sort of disease. And, but the problem is, is that I would literally have, to, meaning that I was, was surrendering her and allowing the shelter to perform whatever they needed to do her. And I said, no, I want this cat. Can I pay you for the adoption fee and then come back and get her after you know when she's available? And they said, no, we don't have the staff to keep up with things like that. And I'm like, really? Come on, I'm giving you the one fee that you're asking for, and you can't even make an effort to call me. The other option was that, which and would have been more expensive had I gone with it, was that I could have, you know, taken her with me, attempted to go find a vet, and pay, you know, upwards of three or four hundred dollars to get all those things needed for her. So I did surrender her to the shelter for a week, but she's now mine, and she's home, and she's very, very sweet. So I'm very happy to have another fur baby. Another Yay. thing. Thank you. Yeah, I know that way. You're Don't practicing. Think. You're literally, you're literally pl- practicing cat herding now. Yay! I only have two. I'm very far from a crazy cat lady, so shut up. <laughs> well, I think that's the libertarian idea for small government cat herding. herding. Well, I mean, <laughs> cat herding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that. You know, try herding cats. <laughs> well, I think the borderline for crazy cat lady is three, so I'm almost there, but not quite. Um, Secondly, and more serious news, is that I am now a co-host of Free Talk Live, which you can find on LRN.fm. It is the Liberty Radio Network. i be there um, Fridays, so <gasps> that's pretty exciting. Wow, when you said a guest co-host, I thought it was only going to be like a one-time stint. Um, th- this, well, I had been on there twice before, um, once for an after show and then once I subbed for somebody, but I was actually offered a, a permanent spot on Fridays being, being the um, co-host. Yeah, you're moving up easily, the flagship show for <laughs> the movement. That's pretty darn interesting. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty neat. Like I was very surprised when they offered it to me. Well, they the the other co the other co host that had been there was also female. So they you know they really wanted you know another woman to be on there because let's face it, LRN is made up of mostly men. And you know, not not saying that they don't want women, they would gladly welcome pretty much anyone that was able to talk into a mic and have something very interesting to say. But you know, there's not really a whole lot of women that want to do that kind of thing. Why? I don't know. I mean, they've had their series of guest hosts and co-hosts that have been female, but a lot of a lot of the women have moved on to other projects or they've moved out of the town and they come all the time. So it was very important for them to find a woman, and so I was so happy to take on the um, take on the position. So it's been really fun. I've done it a couple times, and a funny story about that is that I have a cousin that lives over in uh, Russia, and apparently he listens to Free Talk Live because he messaged me and said, "Yeah, so Free Talk Live is on my podcast lineup, and you were there recently. What's up?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my goodness." Wow, that's a, seriously great job. And I mean, I, I would love to think that having you on weekly here has helped you get to a position where you feel more comfortable doing something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, I, you know, definitely this and other shows that I've been on have really helped me get over my shyness. It's a little bit more intimidating with Free Talk Live because Free Talk Live is also a nationally syndicated re- news station, so Tons and tons of radio shows have them daily, so obviously there's the SEC guidelines that I have to be careful careful about to follow. But um, yeah, so it's a little bit more intuitive, meaning that I'm on so many different radio networks, and you know, someone I know could be like, "Oh, hey, I'm going to call and troll Danica." And <laughs> thankfully, that hasn't happened yet, and you know, I'm sure my friends or family that would be around to listen to me would be way more professional than that and not purposely do that. Like if they were going to call in, they would obviously has something to say, they would be serious about it, but they wouldn't call into a nationally syndicated show and try to make fun of me. That would get them kicked off the air like you would not believe. 
Well, congratulations to you, and that's very exciting. Thank you. No, oh, sorry. On to what I was, you know, driving to on <laughs> stuff after a couple of announcements that people are interested. Um, there was something that I really wanted to bring up, which I thought was going to be interesting. Um, how many of you are familiar with the 90-year-old man that has been arrested, I believe, twice now for feeding the homeless? Three oh, times. Yeah, both of us are familiar Three times, with it. okay. Okay, so, you know, very familiar with the story. There's been an update to the story. Um, the Libertarian Party of Palm Beach, Florida, has um, planned a, uh, a rally to defy the ordinance in order to help feed the homeless. So on December 17th, the uh, the party intends to um, make a rally and feed the homeless without seeking permission from the city. Yay. That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, so I thought it was great that, you know, a bunch of people are coming together to stick up for this poor man who's all he's doing is just trying to feed those less fortunate. I mean, can you imagine just not being able to feed people? Like, how horrible is that? Just, to, like, really, you're not going to allow someone going on their own to feed people that need it? Like, that, ugh, it's just, it's so barbaric to me. It, it warms my heart to to hear about people saying, you know what, I don't care about jury nullification. I'm just going to do citizen nullification and just ignore the laws. It's, it's, that's it's essentially the same thing they did up there in Keene with uh, smoking in the uh, smoking weed in the in the town square. Mm-hmm. You just ignore the laws, and and eventually they give up. Well, I will say this: you do get a summons to serve jury duty, but uh, where I live, they said most most days they won't even go after people who just skip out because it's just not worth it. Oh yeah, I I I mean I'm pretty sure that that's the case. It's just too much work to try and go after people for stupid stuff like that. I remember getting a summons like that one time. I went in and I said, "Oh, I'm a student." And they're like, "Okay, bye bye." I mean, that's all there it takes. I was a student at the time, but they didn't need to know I was taking night classes on the computer. So whatever. Oh, yes, you're taking classes on the computer. You're a big girl now. Hey, shut up. Anyway. So the old man, um, I've, I've, from what I understand, he's made a vow that he's going to be back there every single week. He's not going to stop coming. And he's just going to keep getting tickets and so forth. And well, that's, a, that's what Derek J does. I mean, that's, you know, what you're saying is that he, when he goes downtown, he refuses to fill the meters. And currently, I believe he has two parking tickets and he, plans on taking each and every one of them to court. Exactly what you need to do. And it's great because, you know, here in Keene, the parking ticket's only $5. And you think it to yourself, oh, it's only 5 That's not such a big deal. But, I mean, if you go and you fight it, there, and this is what they put on all the Robin Hood stickers, that if for some reason the Robin Hooders cannot get to your car, they give you a pamphlet, of, uh, you know, a small piece of paper with some information. So typically the parking officials try to talk you out of wanting to dispute the ticket because, you know, it's a lot of for a five dollar ticket, the problem is is that they have to be willing to hear um, whatever it is that you have to say about the ticket. So, and more often than not, the ticket gets dismissed because they just don't want to deal with it. However, for some reason, if they decide to be jerks and don't dismiss it, you're still only paying five dollars. You're not paying court fees on top of it. You're essentially just costing the system money. Perfect. And you and get, get to sit there and then speak your mind and rail to the truth. Yeah, you get to speak your mind. You don't even have to dress up for the court system. That's that's the beauty of it. And aren't uh, isn't a recording allowed in there as well? Recording is allowed in the court systems. Best place to commit activism, right there in New Hampshire. That's why I'm moving in four months. Yeah, it's a great um, it's a great little system that we've got up here. Um, there's always going to be some sort of activist that will be available to take. Um, some sort of recording video for you if you ask. Um, most of them have pretty flexible schedules; they're able to do that. So I'm glad that we, I'm glad that we have that option available. I have not gotten a ticket so far. Um, speaking of the tickets, though, a partner, my partner, went and uh, had to go down to the college recently for a couple of things. And we typically park in uh, in an off lot by the school. It's still required to have a permit, but. We've always parked there and have never had a problem, but he parked there and got a $50 ticket by this by the school system. 
he went and he protested it, and they just waved, They just took it off. They didn't try to fight him on it. It's like you said, they just don't care. I wonder if they used to do that before, you know, pre-2001. Before the I wonder. Up there. I wonder if the if the system realizes that, hey, if uh, if we just uh, you know acquiesce to these free staters, then they're such a small minority that we can just continue to keep it, continue to, to collect taxes from all the people that do just obey blindly to our force, or, uh, our threat of, of you know, a gun or you know, staging, and um, and maybe they're just like you know we're just going to acquiesce to the free staters. We'll just let give them a pass and pretend like they're not even here. Essentially, dis- dis- disempowering us. I mean, it's it's not a bad tactic if you think about it. No, it's not. You no, know, it's definitely not a bad tactic whatsoever. Now, before Danica chimed in with her good news, uh, Lord Phoenix is very excited about sharing an article that he read. So, why don't we go ahead and turn it over to him and see what it is he yes, wants to sure. share? Yeah. is an article from BuzzFeed. Um, it is entitled, and uh, it, it's directed mainly for you, Mandy. Um, it's, a, it's a series of 19 things. Oh, I can't pull it up. Give me one moment. It's a, it's a series of 19 questions, or, uh, or 19 secrets, that teachers won't tell you. <laughs> Let's see how many of these actually apply. Okay. So the first one is, uh, number one, you totally have favorites. Uh, yes. Guilty. Uh, do I? Two. But do I treat them differently than the other ones? No, I don't. So number two would be, and you have least favorite. Um, in my class, no, no, I really don't. Not in my class. There are kids that I don't relate to as well as other kids. There are kids that I haven't made a connection with, like I've made a connection with some others, but I can't say I have least favorites. All right. Well, number three is there are kids you don't like for literally no reason at all. No. I don't think about her voice. I can't put my fingers on it. I think that there are teachers out there who, yeah, feel that way about some kids, but no, I don't, not in my class. No. All right. Well, Number four is you're just as scared as students are when uh, you get called to the principal's office. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely, especially as a new teacher. Oh, my God, yes. You just oh, I'm know. sure. What have I done wrong? Oh, my God. Did, what, did I say something wrong to little Jimmy? Oh, my God, yes, that's the truth, yes. All right, so number five, uh, you gossip about students with other teachers. Oh, it's not gossiping, it's venting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, qualifiers? it's venting. It is not gossiping. We don't gossip. We literally vent. I mean, the only people I can tell you guys all day long about students in my class and some of the things they've done. But ultimately, probably as my friends, you'll probably go, oh, I'm sorry. Or you'll try to give me advice or tell me that what I've done is an, a violation of the NAP or something like that. Only teachers are going to understand what you're dealing with. So seriously, it's venting. It's not gossiping. <laughs> All right. So number six is you laugh at the dumb stuff that kids write on their assignments. Oh, hands down. Oh, who wouldn't? <laughs> Look, we have weekly homework. And another one of my coworkers actually showed me we have weekly homework. The kids have to read every night. They have to write down what they read. They have to say the main characters. They have to point out the plot or something like that. One kid said that she read the Holy Bible. She said, what happens in the end of the book? Jesus dies. What else happens? He dies to save our souls. That's not what happens in the end of the book. In the end of the book is Revelation. But see, the the fact that she said she read the Holy Bible from start to finish, and what she said, she didn't even say start to finish. She said, what pages? 60 to 80. What pages? 80 to 120. Right. See, the Bible doesn't even read like a book. It's all a bunch of different books. There's no way that this made sense. We were rolling. We were absolutely rolling. And the time one of my students wrote, um, she said that, uh, oh, we were talking about slavery. She's Hispanic. We were talking about slavery, and she said that black people, all they do is smoke and 
they're lazy and all they do is smoke. Okay, that was appalling, but it was so appalling I couldn't believe she said it. I just busted out laughing. What are you supposed to say to that? Just I mean, I know. Point out the logical fallacies in it. Be like, no, well, no, actually, that's a really broad generalization. Um, well, this, I didn't show it to anybody. It didn't count as a grade. I just didn't mention. She's not in my class anymore. She moved, but I, I don't even know what to say to that. And I, I just, I don't know. But yeah, we some of the stuff the kids write, absolutely, it's it's cute. I mean, it's it's not that that wasn't cute, but we don't laugh because you know, we're considering them dumb or stupid or anything. I, I don't even use those words in my class, but it's it's because it's it's um it's innocent. It's innocent humor. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well number seven says you don't always do your own assigned reading. But to be fair, you've read the Scarlet Letter twelve times and probably don't need to. Um let's see. Uh no I wouldn't say that. The stuff I assign to them I read with them. So does that count? Well, I think it's insinuating that we, it would be done there, but I think that's mostly mainly for like, I think, uh, you know, middle school to high school age kids. That would that would be rather applicable to. Um, some of the stuff I do read beforehand, but some of it I like to discover with my kids. So I like to see what I'm reading that they pick up that I pick up. So. Um, I guess that's fair, a little bit. I've, I have never read The Scarlet Letter. I found it too dull and boring when I tried to start. So, All right, so number eight is movie days are for the days that you just don't want to teach. And then there's a little asterisk that says, uh, or, you had a little, uh, or you had a late night out. Uh, no movies. We're not allowed to watch movies. I mean, we are, they don't let us watch anything. We show clips of anything, if, if anything. But I'm, a, I'm always teaching. I'm always up teaching. So no, no movies. Okay. Number nine is if you want a kid to get a B in the class, the kid will probably get a B in the class. No. No. I don't don't, I don't distribute grades. The kids get what they earn. All right. So number ten is you totally crush on students' parents. And it's got a little asterisk then saying uh, how you spent an hour getting ready for parent-teacher conferences. No. Absolutely not. Most of my students don't speak English. All right, number 11, you're just as uncomfortable seeing your students outside the class. No, I embrace them. I love them. No. <laughs> you intentionally have hearing problems, is number 12. Uh, it's got a little asterisk that says, I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear that because I don't feel like disciplining you right now. Um, No, I, I wouldn't agree with that either. I'm sure some people do, but I'm just like, don't do it again, and then I leave it at that. I address it, but I leave it at that. So number 13, sometimes you curve things because you just you realize you screwed up and made it a little bit too hard. Um, no, I won't. I, it is important to me in my classroom to show integrity. If I say something is too hard, I tell the kids flat out, hey, this was very hard. Ms. Parsons made this hard, so I'll maybe go over it with them or we'll redo it together to teach so they could still get the teaching moment out of it. But no, I would I would never, I admit when I'm wrong to my students because I would want them to do that for me. Well, no, it's saying that you would curve the the grading. No, I... I, I mean, that's essentially curving it, uh, going over it and, you know, ensuring that they understand it. I disagree. I disagree. I wouldn't call that curving. They're still getting the learning moment. If they, if they, if they're, if I'm a curving a grade for something that they've already done and I'm not going over it with them, I'm just simply giving them free points. If I'm going over something and then that I change the grade because they they still had the learning moment. They picked something up on that. So, no, I would tell them that it was hard and that we're going to redo it or we're going to do it together. Okay. All right, so number 14 is you really do have eyes in the back of your head. It's funny you say this. I had a moment like this today. I was at the board. I was writing something on the board, and I said, hey, so-and-so, quit talking. And she goes, okay. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at her. I just knew it was her talking because I recognized her voice. And I'm like, so-and-so, knock it off. And he says, okay. Yeah. Your eyes in the back of your head. We do. I think they get implanted there when you agree to teach. Sounds about right. Yeah, and I was in the back of my head too. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell when when a kid's acting up. You can say something, and you're like, "Stop it!" They're like, "How'd you know that?" 
So number 16, you purposely call on kids that you don't think did their homework. Um, no, because our homework system is a little different. I will call on quiet kids to make sure that they are understanding what I'm teaching, but I don't do it to deliberately embarrass children at all. If they don't know, I'm like, you know, do you want me to call on somebody to help you out? And they'll just say yes or no. Okay. Um, number 17, three more. When you say that you didn't have time to grade those tests, you're probably doing something fun instead, like going out to dinner or watching Orange is the New Black or having a life. Um, how about sleeping? Does that count? Mm, <laughs> sleeping. Sleeping is fun. Okay, sleeping. Yeah, that, and it's usually what I do. I tell the kids, sorry, I didn't grade the test. I was sleeping, and that's the truth. All right, number 18. You scramble, uh, you scramble to, to give graded assignments before finals when you realize your students have only been graded on two things all year. Oh, my God, I'm in that, right, I'm in that process right as we speak. <laughs> we, have, we have progress reports coming out on Friday um, because it snuck up on us at the last minute, and I wish they had given us till after the break so that I could get everything done on the break while you're at work and I'm up there. But no... No, everything is due Friday, so I'm I'm scrambling right now to get those last minute grades. <laughs> and then number nineteen, you have a life outside of school. Um, does Freedomizer Radio count as a life? <laughs> I would say certainly. Uh, does Unity Evolved count as a life? Certainly. Okay, then I have a life outside of school. Because it's certainly not the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I think overall the list was pretty accurate. Uh, you can check that out over at BuzzFeed. I think uh, it's I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I think yeah, some of it I think would apply more to other teachers. You already know that I run my classroom completely different from normal classrooms. Indeed. So yeah, that that's a I like that list. That's a very good list, even you know from a non-teacher's perspective. Just be like, yeah, if I were a teacher, I'd totally do all those too. <laughs> Oh, my poor kid today. I felt so bad. He started crying. And he was, I was just like, what's what's wrong? He goes, every time I try to tell you something, you cut me off. And I told him, I said, I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. I was like, you have to understand something, though. I love you because you're brilliant. And I love you because you're intelligent. And I love you because I can talk to you in a way and communicate with you in ways that I can't communicate with some of the kids in this class. I said, it's just usually when you try to share your knowledge with me, it's at a time you're not supposed to be talking or a time when we're trying to transition or you're trying to tell me something that has nothing to do with what we're learning at that moment. I told him, I said, I want to know everything that you have to tell me. You just have to say it at a time when it's more convenient. And he goes, okay. And I gave him a big hug and we went to lunch. So I felt really bad for that today. But there's another girl in my class. She asks questions all the time. The most bizarre, weird question stuff I could never even start to answer. And she's there's like, There's no such thing as a dumb question. You know that. I tell them there's no such thing as a dumb question. There isn't a dumb question. It's just, I told her, I said, Okay, look, I want to answer all your questions. I love your curiosity. I love your willingness to learn. I love your want to learn. I said, Do me a favor, write down all the questions you have and for them at a time that's more Aww. convenient. So that's how that's how I have helped that situation. But she's a hot mess. Her desk looks like she's is about to explode all over the floor. <laughs> oh, dude, I bet you her birthday is in February or uh, or March. N- oh. No, she's a girl after my own heart. No, no, her birthday was in October. What the hell? Well, it's a girl after my own heart, dude. Asking so many questions, I love that. I uh, when I was in boot camp, I actually asked so many dang questions within the first two weeks that they told me I can only ask one question every two days. And did you listen to the man? Um, I was rather confined to a uh, a recruit depot, so it's kind of, yeah. They, oh. can, they, can, they can make you do jumping jacks until you puke. Those are the days. That's sarcasm. Yeah, I totally do not miss that at all. It's kind of funny. Um, my senior drill instructor just today posted a video of our platoon, the, the last, uh, the last little uh, photos that you take before graduation and everything, and you know, he tagged every single one of us in it. And I've yet to comment on it, but I'm so tempted to. Wow, 
Um, yeah, military. Your your talk about the military is is the kind of stuff like me talking about my teacher stuff. Like we understand, but we don't get it. You know. I got you. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I mean, I've you know did my fair share of military men. They're they're their own special snowflakes. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> brainwashed. So yeah. Yes, you are all brainwashed. That is for darn sure. It's like my teaching stuff. I mean, I, you know, I really appreciate that you posted that article because of the fact that that's kind of, in a way, you're you're asking to be invited into my little teacher world and know more about what I do. So, I thank I thank you for that. I think it's great. I posted it because I figured you'd get a kick out of it. I did. I did get a kick out of it, but at the same time, like I said, you're being invited a little more into my teacher world, and I always love talking about my students. I love my class. I love what I do. Um, it's just all the things that we're required to do that kills a teacher. Sure, yeah. Absolutely. On all the testing, I about cried when I had to give my students the standardized test. I I almost cried for them. I really did. Oh. I can't stand it. It sounds like, did we lose him again? I hope not. Well, and it says on my end oh. that yeah, yeah, it looks like he's a business connection. <laughs> yeah, well, it just says that there's a problem with this call. He is the problem on the call and with connection. So. Oh, those darn roommates. Yeah, and they got a lot of them. When I went up last time, there, there's a lot of them. So um, I will say this, that you guys should tune in. And, oh, my gosh, we can we can go ahead and, and give the rundown. Monday nights, you guys should listen. Um, well, that's when we record. It's not when it's up. But we do have a podcast Unity Evolved, you can check it out, SoundCloud, you should, it's amazing, it's got me, it's got Liberty Phoenix, and it's got two of our other friends who join us, very exciting. Um, Danica, you said Free Talk Live on Fridays at what time? Uh, 7 to 10 Eastern. 7 to 10 Eastern, and then again, you can always hear us on Wednesdays from 7 to 9 Eastern, and we are... Always here. Seven to nine yeah, seven to nine Eastern, so that would be what, four to six Pacific, is that right? Um, it would be four to seven Pacific. So it's three hours. Well our show um, is, no, our show is two hours. I'm talking about our show on Wednesday. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, that would be four to six um Pacific here on Wednesday nights, freedomizerradio.com. dot com. This is the PM show. Thursdays you can catch us, Voluntary Virtues Network. On YouTube from 4 to 6 Eastern, syndicated from the night before. So if you miss a part or if you just like to listen to us because we're sexy ladies, you could do that too. How amazing is that? So I will say this. I got Tess. What? Three sexy, gorgeous ladies. You're a gorgeous. You look amazing, of course. Okay. Um, (laughs) Well, I will say this. The Tessa is in the chat room reminding me of something important, which, Tessa, you took the words right out of my mouth. Please stay tuned for the Proof Negative show, which is coming up next. Our beloved Proof, he has three hours of interesting guests and people and stuff to talk about. So so don't miss that. Give him some love. But I got to say, this was a great show. I had a great time tonight. Thank you, my illustrious co-host. I love you all, both of you. Thank you for having us. Always. Yeah, thank you for having us. Always. So I am actually going to take us out with our good friend Harrison Ray, who I introduced the show tonight with his music. I have missed it. And hopefully <laughs> we'll get some new music. <laughs> Liberty Phoenix. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm going to end the show now. Um, this is the song Bells. So thanks, guys, for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.